What's up my bro, Tundrum here, back with another video, and today I'm going to be showing you my General Kudru of Dranif Human Tribal EDH deck. Now with a Corey release just around the corner, we've been getting some insane new spoilers, and it looks like they're going to have a lot of Human Tribal in this set. We've been getting so many insane Human Tribal payoff cards, new Buster Humans, and we've even got our first new Human Commander. He's an absolutely insane Orzhov Human Commander, and so I reckon he's made a bunch of new viable Human decks in Commander, and has made this archetype a viable Tribal deck for pretty much the first time ever. So, without further ado, let's get into it by looking at the commander, General Kudu of Dranith. He's a free mana, free free, legendary creature, human soldier, which is okay. He's always off. And then he says, other humans you control get 1-1. One, one. Okay, that's very good. Then he says, whenever him or another human enters the battlefield under our control, we get an exile target from an opponent's graveyard. This is really great because there's lots of graveyard stuff in Commander. It can shut down graveyard decks and get rid of lots of flashback cards. And on top of all of this, he can also pay two and sacrifice two humans to destroy target creature with power four or greater. This is busted, giving all our creatures 1-1, one, one, exiling all our opponent's graveyards out, and having the ability to sacrifice two often very small humans, because we have a lot of token generators in this deck, to destroy any creature with power four or greater. This is just so good. He can remove massive threats, get buffs up all our humans, and we're going to have a lot of swarmy humans, because that's kind of what humans do, right? And we can exile their graveyards. He's really solid, and I reckon he's going to be a great human commander. That's why I'm building this deck even before a courier has been released. Now, this video is going to be split into three sections, four sections, sorry. And without further ado, let's get into section one, humans. First up in the deck, we're running Sierra Ascendant, Falia's Lieutenant, and Village Cannibals. Sierra Ascendant, kind of an auto include in any Y EDH deck. It's a 1 mana 1 1 with life length, and then as long as we have 30 or more life, it gets 5 5 and has flying, and it's a human. So if you play this on turn 1, you've suddenly played a 1 mana 6 6 flying life link. That's insane, this card's busted. Then we have Falia's Lieutenant, one of the best old tribal payoffs from Shadows Over Innistrad. She's a 2 mana 1 1 creature human soldier and it says when she enters put a 1-1 one -one counter on each other human we control and whenever another human enters you put a 1-1 one -one counter on her. She's good to play with lots of humans on the battlefield in your hand, she gets really big, she buffs up your whole board, becomes a massive threat, it's just a really insane card. And then we have village cannibals, it's a free mana 2-2 two -two human and whenever another human creature dies put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. With all our swarmy stuff, we're often going to have quite a few creatures dying, so this can often get massive into 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, plus whenever humans are really common, so whenever our enemies' ones die, it will also get bigger. Next up, we're running Falia, Guardian of Fraben, Ranger Captain of Eos, and Silverwing Squadron. Falia is really insane, kind of an auto include in most white decks. She does punish us a little bit, but it's often going to hurt the opponents more. She's a 2 mana 2 1 first strike, and all non creature spells cost 1 more to cast, really punishing our, our opponents. Then we've got Ranger Captain of Eos. He's a free mana, free free, and he says when you enter search your library for a creature cover of CMC 1 or less and put it into your hand, and you can sack him to stop your opponents from casting non creature spells this turn. So he tutors for any of our mini one drops, which is really solid. He's a free free human body, and he can stop your opponents from casting non creature spells. And we've got Silverwing Squadron, the 6 mana star star creature human knight with flying and vigilance. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures we control, which will be a lot, so it will often be very big. And whenever it attacks, we create a number of 2-2 two -two knights equal to the number of opponents we have. So this is a massive creature that can often create 3 or 4 2-2 two -two knights when it attacks. Super solid. Next up, we're running Rally for the Throne, Gather the Townsfolk, and Boros Elite. Now, Rally of the Throne, I was for the Throne, sorry, I was a bit skeptical about running. It's a free mana instant that creates two one one white humans, which is okay, two bodies for free mana, but not the best. And then if we spend at least three white mana, which is pretty easy because we're primarily white, we gain one life for each creature we control. Like it's decent, but I only it only just made the cut. Like if I was going to cut one card, it would probably be this. Then we've got Gather the Townsfolk, it's 2 mana, create 2 one, one white humans, which is really solid in our deck, because then we to curve into the general, and then they all become 2-2s, two really good, and we can sack them to destroy big stuff, and as long as we have 5 or less life, which will occasionally happen, we also we get 5 of those tokens instead. And then we've got Boris Elite, which is a 1 mana, 1-1 one, one human, and whenever it and at least 2 other creatures attack, which will be pretty often, it becomes a free-free, really good. Next up we're running my Chaos the Lunark, 
Muriti Entity, and Militia Bugler. My Chaos the Lunar, it's 1 and then X, and it ends with X11 counters on it. Already pretty good. Then you can tap him to put a 1 1 counter on himself, and the most important bit, you can tap him and remove a counter from himself to put a 1 1 counter on each creature you control. So you cast this, let's say X equals 3, and then over 2 turns you put 2 1 1 counters on all your other stuff, you buff him up, put another 1 1 counter, he absolutely makes your board insane. Mirror Entity, it's a free mana changeling, 1-1, one, one, so it is a human, and you can pay X to give all your creatures base power and toughness XX, so most of our humans get heaps of buffs, but their base power and toughness isn't very high, so we do this for 5, and suddenly we've got an army of 7, 7, 8, 8 creatures. And then we've got Militia Bugler. It's a free mana 2 free human, and it has Vigilance, and when it enters we get a look at the top 4 and get a creature with power 2 or less, which is most of them. Next up we're running Pitiless Plunderer. Precinct Captain and Mentor of the Meek. Meek, sorry. Pitiless Plunderer is a 4 mana 1 4 human pirate, and it says whenever another creature we control dies, we get a treasured artifact that has tapped to sack this artifact, add 1 mana of any colour. So we're going to have quite a few things dying. It's a decent body 1 4 blocker, and it gets us heaps of mana with the treasure. Precinct Captain, it's a 2 mana 2 2 first strike human, which is already okay, and then whenever it deals damage to a play, you get a 1 1. This is really good. Then we have Mentor of the Meek. It's a free mana 2-2 human soldier, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield with power 2 or less under our control, which is like 80% of our deck, we then get to pay 1 to draw a card, which is a really solid rate. Next up we're running the Ranger of Eos, Kite Sail Freebooter, and Cabal Console of Allocation. Now Ranger of Eos is a 4 mana free 2, and when it enters we get to search a library for 2 creature cards with CMC 1 or less, and put them into our hand. This is really insane, getting 2 of our really good 1 drops, really good. Then we've got Kite Sail Freebooter, it's a 2 mana 1 2 with flying, and when it enters we get a look at target opponent's hand and exile a non-creature non-land card until it leaves the battlefield, getting rid of a major threat and forcing them to waste something on your 1 2 flyer. And then we've got Kimbell, Console of Allocation, an insane 3 mana 2 3, and it says whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, which is 90% of its creatures, they take 2 and you gain 2 life. This is just really good. Next up we're running Dragon Hunter. Taser, Orzov, Cyan, and Soul Warden. Dragon Hunter, it's a 1 mana 2 1 human, that's normally it all, all it is, but if we happen to be up against dragons, it also has protection from dragons and can block dragons as though it had reach, so suddenly it becomes a super insane card, and we can tutor it up if we're against dragons with some of our tutor 1 CMC list cards. Then we've got Taser. She's a free mana 2 free, and she says we can sack free white creatures to exile something, which is insane because we have so many tokens to spam stuff, and whenever another black creature we control dies, we get a 1 1 white spirit. This is super solid. Then we're running Soul Warden. It's a 1 mana creature human cleric that says whenever another creature enters the battlefield, you gain 1 life. This can gain us so much life over the game with all our enemies' creatures and our creatures entering, and it's a 1 1 human. Solid card. Next up we have Mirren Crusader, Adaptive Automaton, and Knight of the White Orchid. Mirren Crusader is a 3 mana 2-2, two, two, Human Knight with Double Strike, really good, and that will become 3-3 free, free when we play our General and more Lord effects. It suddenly becomes Titanic, and it has protection from Black and from Green, which is a nice upside. Adaptive Automaton is a 3 mana 2-2 two, two artifact creature construct, and when it enters we choose a creature type, which is obviously going to be humans, and it suddenly becomes that type and gives all our other creatures of the chosen type 1-1. One, one. So essentially, it's essentially the general, but has one less power and toughness and doesn't have those bomb 2 abilities. It's still really good though, 3 mana 2-2 two, two human that buffs all the other humans is good. And then we've got Knight of the War White Orchid. It's a 2 mana 2-2 two, two first strike, already decent. And then when it enters, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search your library for a planes and put it onto the battlefield. Solid card. Next up, we're running Zalaport Cutthroat, Increasing Devotion, and Draneth Magister. Zalaport Cutthroat is insane. With all our creatures dying, and in fact that it's a human as well, we're constantly going to have a lot of our creatures dying. We can sack them with our general. We've got lots of little bodies we'll swarm over and have lots of things die. This will suddenly hit your enemies for so much damage and gain us heaps of life. Increasing Devotion is busted. It's 5 mana and we get 5 1-1 white humans. 
and we can flash back it for nine and then get ten humans. This is insane. Even just the top half, five bodies, those will all become two twos. We can exile all our opponents' graveyards, then we can just sack a few of them off to kill all your enemies' big threats. And then Draenef Magister, this is a new insane card from Ikoria. This card's just so good in Commander. It's a 2 mana one friend that says your opponents can't play things from anywhere other than their hand. Stops them from playing things from Exile off the top of their library with things like Corsair of Crucifix. And, most importantly, it makes it so none of them can play their Commanders. Great card. Next up we've got Fraben Doomsayer. Fiend Hunter and Linden. Fraben, it's really good. It can tap to create 1 1 humans and it gives all the other creatures 2 2 if we have 5 or less life. Busted card. Then we have Fiend Hunter. It's a free mana 1 free human cleric and it exiles something when it enters until it leaves the battlefield, removing a viable threat for a good period of time. And then we have Linden, the Steadfast Queen. She's a free mana, free free vigilance, and whenever a white creature you control attacks, you gain 1 life. With all our little swarmy stuff, she's going to give us a lot of life. Next up we have General's Enforcer, Courageous Outrider and Champion of the Parish. General's Enforcer is really good. He's a 2 mana 2 free creature human soldier and he says legendary humans you control have indestructible. So this gives all our human legions and most importantly our commander indestructible. Really good. And we can exile tug a card from a graveyard for 4 mana to create a 1-1 one -one if it was a creature. Then we have Courageous Outrider, a solid human tribal payoff. She's a 4 mana 3 4 creature human scout, and when she enters, if we control another human, we get a look. Oh, wait, no, when she enters, we don't even need to control another human. When she enters, we get a look at the top four cards of our library, and we may reveal a human card from among them and put it into her hand. Solid dig effect gets us card advantage and a big body, good card. And then Champion of the Power is probably the best one drop in the deck. He's a 1 mana 1 1, and whenever another human enters, you put a 1 1 counter on him. If you play this on turn 1, by turn 4 or 5, he's going to be 5 or 6 or 7 power for a 1 drop. Super insane. Next up, we're running a Quarter Paladin. Charming Prince and Blood Soak Champion. A quarter paladin's a two mana free one creature human knight with battle cry, which is when it attacks all the other attacking creatures get one oh into one turn. This is a really solid card. Then we have Charming Prince, he's a two mana two two, and when he enters we can either choose to gain two life, free life, sorry, scry two, or we can flicker one of our creatures to get good ETB effects. Really solid card, has lots of versatility. And then we have Blood Soap Champion. He's a 1 mana 2 1 human warrior that can't block. Doesn't seem that good. But then he says we can pay 2 if we have Raid online, which means we've attacked with a creature this turn, and return him from the graveyard to the battlefield. This is really good. He can infinitely resurrect over and over. And yeah, he's just a really good card. Coming up next, we have Soldier of the Pantheon, Odric Master Tactician, and Banalish Marshal. All these cards are really good. Soldier of the Pantheon is, is a 2 mana 2-1 two with protection from multicolored, so this is going to have protection from a lot of your stuff that your opponents do and be unblockable in a lot of situations. And it says whenever an opponent casts a multicolor spell, we gain one life. In Commander, lots of things are multicolor, and the fact that we're often going to have three opponents, because it's a multiplayer format, we're going to gain a lot of life with this, and it's got that nice protection upside. Then we've got Odric, he's a 4 mana 3 4, first strike, legendary creature, human soldier, and he says when he attacks, him and at least three other creatures attack, which isn't too hard to do in our deck. We choose which creatures block this combat and how those creatures block. This is so insane. If we get this trigger, we just massacre our enemy. Super solid. And then we have Banalis Marshal, an insane free mana card. It's triple white for a free free. Doesn't seem too good, but then it gives all our other creatures 1-1. One, one. Really busted card. Now we're on to section 2. Utility, card drawer, and ramp. First up we have Afrios, God of Passage. He's a free mana 5-4, legendary enchantment creature god with indestructible. Then he says as long as the devotion to white and black is less than 7, he isn't a creature. That's not too hard to get it up to 7 for a big body. And then he says most importantly, whenever another creature we own is put into your graveyard, return it to your hand unless an opponent pays free life. This resurrects stuff back, hurts our opponents, and can be a massive threat. Really good. Vindicate, really solid card. For a mere free mana we get to destroy any permanent. I'm thinking land destruction, tribal in the deck. No, I'm kidding. Um, just destroy any permanent. Really good. And then we've got Herald's Horn. It's a free mana artifact that says when it enters, choose a creature type. And then creature spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast, which is good. And at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. If it's a creature card of the chosen type, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. 
Next up, we have Elspeth's son's nemesis, Heliod's intervention, and D-Spark. Elspeth is super solid. She's a 4 mana 5 loyalty, legendary planeswalker Elspeth. You can minus 1 to give up to 2 creatures 2 1 until end of turn. Most importantly, minus 2 to create 2 1 1s. So this is 4 1 1 soldiers or humans of it. Really good. And you can minus 3 her to gain 5 life if we low on life. And then we can escape her back from our graveyard to create even more humans. The main reason we're running her is those humans, like as 4 humans is so good in our deck. Then we have Heliod's Intervention. It's double white and an X, and we can either target player gains twice X life if we're low in life, and we can destroy X target artifacts or enchantments, which is the main reason we're running it. That ability is just insane. And then finally, we have D Spark, which exiles any non land permanent with CMC 4 or less for just an Ors of Mana, so one of each. Really good. Next up, we have Anguish Done Making, Smothering Tithe, Tithe sorry, and Talisman of Hierarchy. Anguish done making, really solid, Exi exiles any non-land permanent for free mana, which is an insane rate, and we just lose free life off it. Smothering Tithe, a 4 mana enchantment, just an auto included in the white deck. Whenever an opponent draws a card, they may pay 2. If they don't, we get a treasure. This gets us so much ma mana, sorry, so much value, so good. And then we have Talisman of Hierarchy, really good white ramp card, 2 mana can tap for either colourless or a white or a black, really good ramp. Next up we have Door of Destinies, Sanctuary in the Lockdown, and Coat of Arms. Door of Destinies, when it enters we choose a creature type, and whenever we cast a spell of the chosen creature type we get to put a charge counter on it. And then creatures you control of the chosen type get 1-1 one, one for each charge counter on it. We just cast two or three spells, and suddenly all our creatures have three, three, four, four. Really insane. Then we have Sanctuary Lockdown, one of the new cards from Ikoria. It's free mana, and it just says humans you control get one, one. Really good. And we can pay two and tap two untapped humans with control to tap an untapped creature an opponent controls. This is really good. We can just tap two of our little creatures and tap down a massive threat. Really solid card. Then we have Coat of Arms. 5 mana artifact, and it says each creature gets 1-1 one, one for each other creature in play that shares a type with it. Now, this isn't the best. It's just worth the include, but we're going to have so many swarms, it will make all our humans massive. But then the thing is, your opponent's going to be playing humans too, so all their humans will get massive as well, although they will benefit us. And if your opponent happens to be running a tribal deck like goblins, it's really going to benefit them as well. But it is insane. If your enemies aren't running tribal decks, it makes all your stuff massive. Next up, we have Obelisk of Erd. Soul Ring and Utter End. Soul Ring, auto including any EDH deck. Utter End, 4 mana exiles and non-land permanent. Just a slightly worse anguish I'm making, pretty much. Really good card. And then Obelisk of Erd. It's a 6 mana artifact with Convoke, so we can Convoke it in for really cheap. And then we choose a creature type, which will be humans, and then all our humans get 2-2. Two -two. Super solid, insane card, makes all our little guys massive. Next up, we've got Orzhov Signet and Arcane Signet, both two insane ramp pieces worth the include in any commander deck that can run them. And Dire Tactics, a really insane removal spell from Ikoria. For a mere two mana, you get an exile target creature. Doesn't seem too insane. It will seem super insane, but then it has this little downside saying, if you don't control a human, you lose life equal to the creature's toughness. This is a little bit annoying the life then, but because we're almost always going to have a human, 90% of the time this is just two mana exile target creature. Really OP. Next up, we're running Solemn Sim, just an auto include. Friction Arena, free mana enchantment. This is the beginning of our upkeep. We draw a card and lose one life. It is double black, which is a bit hefty, but it is worth the include. It's just so insane. And then we've got Skullclap, busted in our deck. It's a 1 mana artifact equipment, and it says pay 1 to equip a creature, and the equip creature gets an extra toughness and minus 1, an extra power, sorry, and minus 1 toughness. And then it says when a equip creature dies, draw 2 cards. So we can just go around paying 1 and sacking one of our little humans to draw 2 cards. This is just absolutely insane. Or we can enchant it on one of our bigger things to make it so they get a bit of value if they're killed off. It's just so insane. It's really busted in pretty much any token deck, especially one like ours. And yeah, just busted, busted, busted card. Next up, we're running Swords to Plowshares. Pillar of Origins, and Bastion of Remembrance. Source to Plowshares, insane white removal, just in order included. Exiles any creature for one mana, and its controller gains life equal to its power. They do gain a bit of life, but definitely worth the include. Pillar of Origins, two mana, when it enters we choose a creature type, which will be humans, and then it taps for any colour to cast human spells. Really good. 
And then it says, Bastion of Remembrance, a new card from Ikoria. It says, when it enters, we create a 1 1 white human soldier. Decent. But then it says, whenever a creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. This is so good. It's essentially a Zulaport cutthroat that is way harder to remove and comes with a 1 1 body, human body. This is just so good. It's actually, it doesn't seem too good on the surface, but I reckon this card's going to be insane. And guys, that completes the main list. We're on to the final section, section 3, the mana base. So in the mana base, I don't really have a set mana base, but I suggest running an unclaimed territory, an Orzhov Basilica, Tainted Field, and any real auto includes like Cavern of Souls, Command Tower, that sort of stuff, and any things like Godless Shrine, Orzhov Fetch Lands, just any auto include Orzhov Jewel Lands. And then the rest of the mana base, just fill them with about a 3 to 1 ratio, about 3 swamps, to, 3 planes, sorry, to every 1 swamp of planes to swamps to make it nice and balanced. And also, guys, I'll give you some advice in the list. If you want to make the list super competitive, you can just throw in, in any, like, really good infinite combos in, like, white or black. I have a few videos of those on your channel if you want to check them out. And, yeah, that concludes the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more from me, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And yeah, peace out.